We're back with stats a little late this week for our Patreon subscribers, but for those subscribers, thank you very much. You guys are for awesome. Everybody else, let's uh, dive into what appears to be just absolute warp coven domination. We had 287 players over 25 events, which uh, you know, just for context, Sigmar is around 840 players, and then 40k this week was about. 2,900 players. So whenever you're thinking about your most important little game, just remember that we are teeny tiny in the grand landscape of GW's balancing efforts. Yeah, hopefully we do continue to get bigger and bigger. Uh, invite your friends to tournaments. Invite your friends to games. Keep the community growing. But I guess we're here to talk about a 76% win rate. Average first loss, 3.2. So... Pretty much most of the players were able to get to just into the finals before they lost. And if it's a 3-0, you, know, you pretty much just win? Pretty much. Uh, at least for these small-scale turns. We didn't have a GT this week. So out of the 18 players who took Warp Coven this weekend, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 undefeated players with 1, 2, 3, 4, 0 records and 1, 3, 0, 1, or 3, 1 in the finals. At the Kill Team Florida Open. So, uh, what was that? Just a smashing success. What was that loss for that 3 1? Let's see if we can spot it. It looks like the last round was a loss to Brood Brothers. Brood from Brothers. Event winner, Eric I, who went a clean 4 0. And then Dawson A, last one of uh, World Championships last year attenders, also went 4 0. With Warp Coven as well, losing or winning all four <coughs> rounds, but not scoring as high as the Brew Brothers player. Okay. That's pretty wild. Um, Brood Brew Brothers again for Zinch's chosen favorites, favorite sons. Yeah, like on that note, Brood Brothers had what is that like a fifty-eight percent win rate? Fifty-eight, fifty-seven point eight nine. They had two four-zero finishes. Uh, Jr. or JD from Goonhammer and Eric I, who we just talked about, and then a lot of other players with losses across the board. And there was a two o oh, two one finish with the final loss being against Warp Coven. So in the grand cosmic scale of the great game, it looks like Zinch has done quite well, getting buffed to ungodly power levels it seems like with a 76.8 percent win rate which probably means that you can be good and be good with them and you can be middling and be good with them and it might be like when Inter intercession first dropped on the scene and just stirred everything up because they were impossible to kill so it might be that might be where we're at right now and warp coven as we talked about with george earlier this week does have the flexibility of just pushing all the way up and down the power scales or last week where they can go super wide with a lot of Zangors to manage the melee horde matchups, or they can go super elite with a bunch of rubrics. And it's hard for us to know what players we're doing because we don't do the list anymore. Yeah. Um, all, some of Zinch's other cats uh, among the Legionary, also extremely popular, also doing pretty good, although not quite as good, with a 59%. Um, there's uh, actually... Uh, out of 55, so the green bar... Oh, that's our, yep. That's fifty five. Fifty five. So they're just at the sweet spot at fifty four point one percent. Thirty four players took them. Only four under five undefeated records this weekend. So they did well, but they didn't do overwhelmingly well. But then part of the question there, I assume it, there's not something we can just like click to figure this out. But like elites versus elites, how often is is like it elites keeping other elites down, and like. It's probably that situation in The Simpsons where all the diseases are being pushed through the door at the same time, and um, you know, Legionnaire and Warp Coven keep themselves somewhat contained, and I suspect that is the case. Uh, Novitiates, you know, out there with a 55% win rate, not necessarily destroying everyone, but still being very good. <clears throat> Eight players took them, one undefeated record, but I think the other big surprise of the weekend, dancers, you know, five players, two undefeated records, and out of those other five players, two of them lost in the final round. I'm not like super surprised by Void Dancers being amazing because they they seem pretty good. 
We did get a little bit of a glow up. I think the change to seven inches of movement and keeping most of their most powerful crit tricks and now having all of those crit tricks be guaranteed because their balance blades have now gone to severe. So you can go in, reliably do a critical and a normal hit and then back away from someone, which is very potent if all you're going to be playing against is Marines. So I think right now they do kind of prey on the play space of everyone's trying to play a bunch of Marines and having eight models with two, three of them being heroes that can all take down a Marine or chip down a Marine very reliably means that you've got enough room to go score whatever archetype you're trying to go get. Yeah. Pretty pretty good. Um, so that's the that's the two red that are over overperforming is Void Dancer Troop and Warp Coven. We've got a couple of red bars that are underperforming. Um, I'm a, a little surprised to see the Corsair Voids card. I guess not the most surprised because I feel like they have the absolute potential to spike into the red on the other side. But also, you, it's another one of those teams that you play on a razor's edge, and like if you make like. One blunder is like three dead elves. It's, you know, it's easy yep. to just buckle and die, but it's also easy to just like, well, it's not easy. It's it's very capable that they could just like obliterate the scene. Yeah, it turns out that the closest we had to a fully winning record on Corsair Voids card this last weekend was a 2-1-1 record out in Poland with the loss being against Mateusz, who was on here a couple weeks ago, talking about Warp Coven dominance. So it was Corsairs versus Warp Coven, taken, with Warp Coven taking the win. Yep. What was the tie? Uh, it was a 13-12 to 12 against Mateusz. So it was literally on the razor's edge. And then the tie was against Mandrakes, which is who was the second place of the tournament. So Elf on Elf violence and Elf on Warp Coven violence just going just barely against them. I can see that. Yeah, so I think Corsairs are definitely a high skill team. You know, you don't have the raw power of a Void Dancer, or yeah, of a Void Dancer who can go in and reliably do two two aggressive actions all in the same play. So Corsairs, you know, you get a dash, so you can reposition, do some shooting, see some people out, catch people unawares on in the dark, but you are definitely trying to climb up the attrition ladder where you're trying to get a kill get out of the way and then keep doing that a couple times and missing a reroll here and there even though you have more rerolls definitely can run into some issues Vespid Stingwing still just incredibly unplayable it's down like in the dirt 22 percent win rate uh not even close to a win record across the board I think every player on this list out of the six has either one win or tie yikes yeah, they don't look like they're doing that amazing. Um, speaking of Hive Storm teams, the Tempestus Aqualons also coming out uh, pretty lukewarm at best. Um, 36.1% it looks like. With mostly losing records, there was one winning one in the Netherlands in an eight-person tournament. So a little 3-0 beating Traitor, Space Marines, Higher Tech Circle, and Higher Tech Circle. That's a crazy arc. That is a crazy arc. I don't actually suspect that Tempest Aqualons would be that good against Higher Tech Circle, since by the time they're rezzing on turn three, your gimmick is over and you're playing against just normal dudes, doing normal dude stuff. Yeah. So good job. Good job in the Netherlands. Hopefully we'll figure out what's going on there. And another big L was Commandos, a team that I think both of us thought would still be pretty good this edition. He's not been doing very well statistically over the last couple of weeks. Yeah, they, I mean, ultimately, they have five up saves and they're pretty just like balanced. Um, they're not, they don't like skew into anything insanely well. And they're not great into hard to kill Marines. And I think that loss of that piercing definitely hurt them quite a bit. Because now when you play against Marines, you're really just hoping that weight of dice will get you there. And it does take a little bit of work for that to actually happen. Yeah. Um, the last of the underperformers besides Unknown is uh, the Scout Squad. Um, just barely missing the mark there, um, which is an improvement over past weeks, but still not great. To be fair, out of the five players that took them, they did have one shining star who got second place in Major Madrid, which was a 28-person event with a 4-0 finish. First round against Phobos, second round against Mandrakes, third round against Phobos, and fourth round against Legionary. So Alejandro Netra from 
Spain, good job. I don't know how you did it, because that's a stacked tournament, and those are hard matchups. Uh, yeah, I'm assuming it was it included don't bring the heavy gunners, because the heavy gunners are awful. That's probably true. Once you, like, actually, so like, the, the warriors are pretty good, and, like, just, like, your bolt guns, your shotguns, your, your warriors with knives, they can actually, like, tango with all sorts of other threats, but if you bring a heavy gun, that's just, like, minus one operative, because you're never gonna have a shot, and you're always gonna, like, wish that you had the shot, so you're never gonna move, and then you're just locked up with some dork that's not doing anything, and you're running around with the equivalent of, of seven scouts trying to fight six legionary, uh, you really need those two extra bodies to get in there with shotguns and go nuts. Yeah, I mean, 4-0 finish against two, three elite teams in Mandrakes. Those are all good matchups. I think Mandrakes are a big one because in the past you could stat check them. That stat check is still there, so you can just run at them and tangle with them one-on-one -on -one and kill them. And then against everyone else, you got to make sure you out outthink them with Deadly Ambush and all the other ambush ploys. And I guess the new entry to the list is Death Guard with a 47.9% win rate. No one went the full 3-0. But Ryan L lost to JD out against Brood Brothers. And then Gaming Ground in Jakarta, Indonesia had the other undefeated record with a win, a tie, and a win. Wait, was it again, 47 or 57? 57% uh, win rate. So they did win overall, but not many players actually went undefeated. Yeah. Death Guard seems pretty good. Uh, I don't think they're... I do kind of think they're on, like, the bottom end of elites. I think having noodled around with them just a little bit, those range limitations for all of your ploys, as powerful as they are, if you cannot get in range, you're just a dude with a feel-no-pain, which is fine, but it's basically just a 16-wound marine, which is very killable. If you can hang out in the 7- and 3-inch ranges the whole game, then it will feel very powerful, but whether or not you can actually get there in time. Not every Volcus map provides a map where you can stage aggressively with a 5-inch... Five inch movement for a seven inch charge. So being able to figure out the charge lanes and the movement lanes on all of the predetermined maps is gonna be really important if you're gonna play Death Guard. And it seems like, you know, they weren't able to just crush everybody. But we'll see. You know, the world championships are right around the corner. I assume team locks have already happened, so we'll see if anyone brings Death Guard and how that happens. Yeah. And like I think the the movement really is a problem, like you were saying, because um, if you try to just, like, wait people out and play contain, like, they're always going to hit you first from non-reciprocal threat ranges, so you really need to, like, project out there. Um, I mean, the way I look at it is, like, create a doom bubble inside of the miasma of, like, pestilence, the flies, the cloud of flies, whatever it is, um, and then your banner is definitely in there, so that anyone that gets within three um, now fights like they're injured, they move slower, uh, and anyone that outside of three is obscured, and then your doom bubble just, like, creeps down the field, you don't need cover, and then you just start, like, slinging poison and, like, yoinking people. Um, which seems amazing, it seems really fun, like, I've noodled around with a little bit, and I'm like, this... I like this team a lot, I just think it's way worse than Phobos. Yeah, Phobos is def definitely a scalpel, and Death Guard are definitely a sledgehammer. But sledgehammers are slow in pondering, and when they get there, they will hit like a truck. And in this case, the sledgehammer heals. Yeah. All right. Well, thanks for coming on and talking about the stats. And thank you, listeners, for hanging out on Patreon or YouTube. Yes. Uh, let us know what you want to hear more about. Let us know what you liked. Um, and chat with us in the Discord and the comments. And we'll see you next week. Later, guys.